How can we help uh, you, my friend? Well, as you know, my question is, how do I get my wife to, I don't, just tell me what happened and, and why she's afraid to tell me. Uh, we separated over a year. I filed for divorce in August. Um, she came back for one day in, in Dece- December 27th. She called me up crying like anything. I didn't even know it was her because I didn't have her phone number. So I happened to swipe the phone. And she said, this is Sheila, this is Sheila, crying, mm-hmm. uh, come and get me. So I said, well, where are you? She says, at the store, that's where she works. Mm-hmm. She's also living with her boss. Mm-hmm. So I went to get her. I, I said, do you want to go home? She says, yes. I brought her home. She's so crying. Mm-hmm. And she's calmed down. And she said to me, um, would you get me a car? Would Would you? Uh, I don't have any clothes. I said, don't worry, I'll buy your clothes. Um what if I didn't want to work and would you adopt? And I said yes to everything. So everything was fine. I think she was a little sick and tired. So she went up to the other bedroom. She didn't go into our bedroom. Mm-hmm. I guess, I don't know, maybe. maybe uh, Can I ask you about a question so you used a minute ago? Bedroom. I need to ask you a question. I'm not sure I heard a word correctly. Yeah. Did you use the word adopt? Are you willing to adopt? Did you say that or did I just hear the wrong word? Yeah, no, she said, these are the questions she asked me, and I said yes to everything. Adapt, adopt whom? A child. Okay. In other words, there's not a specific child. No, no, no. no. Okay. All right, so can you kind of move forward a lot in the story there, friend? So where are you now? Yeah, I am. Okay, so around nine, so everything's fine until 9 o'clock. I hear her on, the, on her phone. So I sort of went to listen, but I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Because that you know, I don't want to see me see her trying to spy and listen to what she says. So nine forty, she comes down. I'm sitting on the couch. She comes down and says, "I have to talk to you." Mm-hmm. I said, "All right." I got up. I go in the kitchen, and she says, "I gotta leave. I gotta move on." Mm-hmm. What happened? And then so I, I I try to pin her down to why, and it's I says, "Is it because something that you can't tell me that you did, and and you're afraid?" And that's, that's all I got out of her. She shaked her head up and down. That was it. Mm-hmm. And so the next day she left. She actually ran out of the house. Okay. And this was how long ago? Uh, December 27th. Okay. And what kind of interactions have you had with her since then? Uh, she texted me about on July, I mean, on January 4th. I'll mm-hmm. see you in court. And uh, I'm sorry, I want the divorce. Okay. And no, no other contact since then? No, no. Okay. Not at all. All right. And so if I, I'm trying to understand then, what specifically, my friend, Bill, what are you, what are you asking? I don't, well, I, I'm, I sort of sense that if she tells me what happened and what she did, then maybe we can go on with our marriage. Possible. I think that's the clog in the wheel. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to get her to, you know, it's been a year. I can't get her to tell me what it is. Right. The last time we talked was in, in July. We were face to face in my in my car, and she says, "I should have told you before." Mm-hmm. I said, "Well, why don't you tell me now?" But she has never told me. Okay, and I think that's the biggest holdup. Plus, and that was how long that, ago you know, when she, when she first said that? July. That was how long ago? July. All right. July. So the first time she said, "I need to tell you something," but I'm not going to tell you what it is, was in July, and the last time right. was in December. Right. Correct. Okay. Right. All right. So I think I got the picture now. Now you do understand, Bill, that if if she's having no contact with you, it's going to be impossible for the fact that, that you get her to tell you something that she's keeping secret from you. Typically, Kimberly, would you agree with this, that when people are afraid to tell something, it's because they're afraid of a negative consequence. Mm-hmm. The negative consequence either from you or from society or negative consequence, <laughs> see if I can talk, negative consequence from within me. Sure. In other words, sometimes saying things out loud, mm-hmm. you all of a sudden have to come face to face with mm-hmm. it. So sometimes people don't tell because they, they, they can't stand the idea of hearing their own words, I did this or I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. And so if she's not telling, she's either afraid of consequences from herself, from you or somebody else, generally speaking. Mm-hmm. You concur with sure, that? Sure, I do. Okay. Now, I must admit that when you said that happened in July, I'm thinking, well, that may mean something's coming. Mm-hmm. And it's something that, that's going to happen that she's afraid to tell you is going to happen. And the word adopt is what really caught my ear there. But that was in December. That was in December. But she first started it in July. Right. And, and when he said that, mm-hmm. I thought, okay, then that's probably not it. Because you can imagine, first thing I thought was if she said, are you willing to adopt? 
that she's gotten pregnant. That's what I, I thought that might be a possibility. <clears throat> but if she's been uh, pregnant since July, you would know it You'd by now. It. Right. Okay. So obviously we don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. She's not telling you because she's afraid. At this point, for whatever reason, either because of his influence or because of what else, something's going on, she has walled you off. Now, we talk about smart contact, which means that you interact with people in a way that actually facilitates communication. You don't mm-hmm. press things on people. You don't, you don't beg, you don't whine, you don't plead. You don't, you don't keep contacting them when they said, leave me alone. So unfortunately, Bill, in the situation you're in right now where she's cut off all contact with you, I don't know that there's any way for you at this point to know what it is she's afraid to tell you. If she proceeds with a divorce, and I I hope that she does not. We are pro-marriage, we try to help people. But if she were to proceed with a divorce, if it's something of major consequence, my guess is, at some point you're gonna know what it is. Now, Kimberly, he said, Mm -hmm. he said, I just feel like if she could tell me now, Mm -hmm. maybe we could work things through. That's a possibility, but not necessarily a probability, is it? Right, because we don't know what it is. Exactly. There's so much unknown in that. And the really the only thing you can do, I mean, you could spend all your time and energy and effort worrying about what it is, trying to figure it out, but I don't know if that's really gonna be helpful or beneficial to you in the long run. But what you can do is if you want to become a person that is creating a great foundation for her to tell eventually if she chooses to, then you focus on doing those habits now. Whenever you do talk, you know, if she were to call you again or when you do text, instead of, and I don't know how you respond, but instead of doing the push behaviors that we talk about, trying to get her to say more to you, making her feel uneasy, you could just be there to listen to her or just listen to what she says or just respond, you know, softly, gently, and calmly like we teach in the things that we talk about at Marriage Helper. Um, and even if it gets to a point where you say, you know, I, I am here for you. If there's ever th- anything you want to share with me, I'm here for you. Mm-hmm. But the flip side of that is if she tells you something, then you can't attack her for it. That's right. You have to be prepared to hear whatever it is mm-hmm. that she might have said if you're wanting to save the marriage. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't care about the marriage, you could respond however you want, <laughs> but that's probably not the best thing to do as a human yeah. being. Yeah. Don't make a person a promise and then not keep it. I'm going to be right. a safe place. You can tell me anything. You what? No, that's mm-hmm. not right. That's not fair. Don't do that.